Lord, I surrender. I surrender. Now, sometimes when we use an expression like that, sometimes when we, we say something like that, it almost sounds like I'm giving up. I'm just completely giving up. I'm not going to try. Forget about it. I'm done. But when I first conceived this title and when I first conceived this series, it was actually the exact opposite that I see in those words. We may say the words, Lord, I surrender, and it sounds like I'm giving up. But when I say, Lord, I surrender, I'm claiming victory. I'm claiming victory. I have achieved, I have won, I have overcome by my surrender to Jesus Christ. I wonder if you've ever had this experience yourself or with someone else. You know, sometimes we do something over and over and over again. We make the same mistake over and over again. There was, there was one time I was trying to drive to a friend's house. I must have drove the path 20 times and made the same wrong turn every time. And for some reason, I just didn't learn from my mistakes. And I kept making that same dumb turn. And every time I did it, and I'd look and I go, I did it again. You know, so, something like that, something simple like that in our lives that we look at and we go, why does that happen? How, how is it that I can't, I just can't get it right? Now think about the other structures in your life. So many people will come to me and basically say, I've made the same sin over and over. I give up. I totally get that. That's it. I'm just not going to even try anymore. And I say, that's not Christian. We don't give up. We surrender it to Jesus Christ. Yes, there are some sins that we'll commit. There, there are people I know that, that have trouble with so many different things. And sometimes it's a problem of addiction, but other times it's just a problem of a compulsion or just this is the way they've been and they just haven't found the way to break the cycle. If you pay attention to the Old Testament enough, if you keep reading the Old Testament, if you've been following Fight Father Mike Schmitz in the Old Testament, what's the one thing that happens almost you know, without, without even having to think about it. Exactly what we heard in Chronicles today. The, the, the people that God chose, the pe God does these miraculous things. He does these splendid things. He eliminates enemies. He brings them into the land flowing with milk and honey. He blesses them with the great law. He loves them tremendously. He cares for them. He gives them food. He, he does all of these great things. And they're all like right after us. Yeah, yeah, we'll do anything for God. We'll follow his law. He's the best. Yeah. And then about 15 years later, they're worshiping pagan idols. They're you're cheating in the marketplaces. They go, and the pattern just continues. They, they have to have another uh, prophet come along, and then that prophet comes along and starts to call them out. And, and sometimes they chase the prophets away, or sometimes they, 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 they say, we don't want to hear that prophetic voice. We love what we're doing. We want to stay the way we are. And that's when we have the biggest problems in society, when human beings defy God. And we see it. I mean, it, today's reading, it was so clear. These people just out and out defied God. They, we don't want your grace, God. We don't want your gifts, God. But when we sin, there are consequences. Sometimes people want to sin without consequences. You, you ever notice that? You know, I want to be able to do this thing and there be no consequences. I want to be able to, to sleep with my girlfriend and there be no consequences. I want to be able to cheat on my taxes and there be no consequences. I want to, and you fill in the blank. You fill in the blank. There's so many things that we know that people think that they can get away with. And then when they get caught, oh, no, no, I, I, there's, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't do that. But then they start another one. They start lying. Think about God's grace. In all of salvation history, again and again, the people of God kept rejecting God. But did you notice God didn't quit? See, we're the ones who give up. We're the ones who say, you know, I give up, Lord. I'm terrible. Forget about me. Don't even try to save me, Lord. I'm wretched. Forget me. But God always comes along and says, no, you're my precious child. You're, you're, you're precious to me. I love you. I want you. I, I want to save you. I want you to, to be back in heaven with me. I want you to return to paradise. I want you back. God is the one who keeps pursuing. 
God is the one who keeps coming after us. And he only asks that we surrender to him, that we surrender our wills and say, listen, Lord, by myself, I mess it up. On my own, I keep making the same mistakes. Without your help, without your grace, I keep falling into the same patterns of sin. And just like the people down through history, what have we seen again and again? God's grace is bestowed upon us. We have a revival. Things get really good. We start to, to operate and everything's like chugging along. And then all of a sudden it's like it's chugging too well. And, and well, what about, and then maybe we could. And then, and before long, we're in a situation, even societally, where we see evils being promoted as good, where we see acts that go completely against the will of God being championed as a great thing. And I could give lots of examples, but I don't want to get too far down that road because that's not the point today. The point is, what are we doing here? When did we reach a point, even those of us who sit here week after week, day after day, when did we reach that point where we think that we can actually go toe to toe with God. That we can tell God what to do and we can say to God, this is how I want it. And this is how you're going to fix it, Lord. And this is what you're going to do. And this is what you're, this is what you owe me because you know what? I put those $2 in the collection basket and I did that little prayer that you asked me to do. So you owe me God. That's kind of the brazen attitude sometimes that people get. I think we've gone through a process now for the last 50, 60, 70 years, and I'm not going to play any blame game right now. There's too many people in the church today that want to demonize or want to have a cause. So no, I'm not blaming bishops. I'm not blaming the Vatican councils. I'm not blaming any of that because this has been cycled throughout history. I take personal responsibility for me, and I ask you to take personal responsibility for you. Don't look for blame. Don't try to figure out if someone was at fault. Take personal responsibility for your own actions, for your own thoughts, for your own trends. Take personal responsibility to say, I need grace. I need God's grace. And what do I need it for? John's Gospel. I need it because John's gospel gives me the, 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 the insights. Today, today's one of those great, great gospels. It's probably one of the top tier gospels. Protestants love it. If you've ever watched sporting events, they would pay extra money to make sure that they had a seat that was on the angle of the camera, say behind a batter's box or at a football stadium, where they can hold up that sign, John 3.16. And their hope was, instead of putting the whole quote up there, just put John 3.16, and everybody who's watching that football game is going to push pause or whatever, run into the room, get their Bible, come back, look up John 3.16. How many of you did that? That's what I figured. That was today's gospel. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son so that we, those who believe, may be saved. God so loved the world. God didn't quit. That's what I love about that. God still loved us. As bad as the Old Testament people were, as bad as we Christians have been down through the centuries, as many sins and dumb things that we have done again and again and again, God still stands there and says, I love you. God still stands there and says, just come to me, bring it to me, place it in my arms, whatever it is, it's time for change. It's time to turn away and return to. That's what Lent is all about. You know, we, we enter the Lenten season every year, and we always have that hope at the beginning of the Lenten season, and so many people are on fire at the beginning of the, you know, and I'm going to do this penance, and I'm going to take on this mortification, and I'm going to give this up, and I'm going to, and like by, you know, the first Sunday, it's like kind of already losing steam, and by the fourth week, forget about it. <laughs> so many people are struggling with their Lenten promises. I can only take responsibility for myself before God. For God so loved the world. Now, here's the beauty of this gospel. If I were a Protestant sitting in the stadium with my John 3:16, I got my message out. But the problem was they wanted you to stop reading at 16. But read the rest of that passage. Because several times in John's gospel, he makes it clear. 
I cannot save myself. Now, I want to be clear about this. There's no action that I could do right now that will open up the gates of heaven. You know why? Because there was one action done that opened up the gates of heaven. That action opened the gates up. So I can't do that. I can't make myself pure. I can't make myself clean. But the blood of the lamb can. Stick with me, because this is a big problem we have with Protestants. Yes, you have to believe to enter heaven, but Jesus goes on to say, and be a child of the light. Let your actions shine as good actions. And yet we somehow got to a point where even people doing evil, and I mean abject, objective evil, are being lauded as wonderful human beings. No. They do it in the dark. Jesus said, there are actions we do that bring about condemnation. There are things we do that reject the great gift, as St. Paul just told us. He called it a great gift. It's unmerited. It was a gift God was going to give no matter what you did. The only thing you have to do is accept it. You just have to accept the gift of God. Don't hide in the shadows and in the dark. Don't hide from yourself. Don't hide from your neighbors. If you're a good person and you're good people, if you're striving for the light and living the Christian way, strive openly. Let the world see that, yes, there are good and virtuous and holy people. Jesus makes it clear. There are actions that we do that reflect the light. So keep doing them. Bring Jesus to the world. Be his messenger. Go forth and share the good news. We have a world that's waiting for us to step up and share the good news. But I think the process that happened is somehow everybody, not just even Catholics sitting in the pews, which a few and a few do, everybody started to believe that there was no such thing as hell, that nobody could be condemned, that there's no way God would ever send anyone to hell. And it's true, God doesn't send anyone to hell. We send ourselves there. By our choices, by our actions, by our ways, by what we do, by the sins we commit, take responsibility for your sin. And that's when God can change it all. By turning back to him and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. I think one of the things that became a telltale sign, just trace the history of the act of contrition. Right now, there's like seven or eight different ones. And someone comes in and confession and says, oh, Father, I can't remember the act of contrition. Can you help me? I'm like, well, which one did you learn? Because <laughs> there's so many different ones. The one that I, I originally learned was the one that had just punishments in it. That's the one I originally learned. But the one before that was, I dread the loss of heaven and fear the fires of hell. When we started to move the language to, you know, uh, my God, I have sinned against you and your church. Please be merciful to me as I'm trying to be better. You know, like it just got so watered down that there was no real challenge for me to change even in the act of contrition. And so I've gone back myself to saying pains and fires of hell every time I go to confession. I, I want to say that out loud because I want to acknowledge that actions can have eternal consequences. And Jesus does not want any one of you. Nope, not any one of you, I can tell. Jesus does not want any one of you ending up in hell. He wants you in heaven. He loves us that much that he's come to offer grace, transformative, life-changing grace. And when you receive the grace of God, even if you falter again, he'll bestow more if you seek it. It's a gift. He's giving it to you for nothing. He wants you in heaven. So live as a child of God. Live in the freedom of a child of God. Sin shackles us and grace liberates us. By surrendering, I claim my victory. Do you get it? By surrendering, I claim my victory. I surrender it all to him. Lord, I surrender it all to you. My sins, my weaknesses, my faults, my problems, my life, my relatives. I surrender it all to you and I can claim victory now. Because by his grace, 
I can stand strong and say, I'm a child of God. I'm a beloved of God. I'm graced by God. And no matter what you do to me, no matter how much you come after me, you can even take my life. I'm a child of God. I know where I'm going to go. And Christ wants you all to go there too. Have that confidence to surrender completely. Have that confidence to say to God, I'm yours. Do with me what you will. Have that confidence to say, Lord, I love you. I'm your child. Maybe this week it's a good time for us to start examining our consciences. One of the important parts of Lent is going to confession. There's a great series on formed if you haven't looked at it yet. And if you haven't, if you're not informed, we've got a whole page in the bulletin. You know how many people come up and say, formed, what's that? It's like, we've had a page in the bulletin for the last four years. But people just skip that page. Just keep... There's a whole page on how to register for informed, and it's called Forgiven. And it's a series of videos talking about the sacrament of reconciliation, about going to confession and how to do it especially for those who maybe it's been a little while, this would be a great way to refresh your memory. It would help you to share it with your children. It's, it's that basic. It's that good. Take this week and just take a look at those videos. Very easy to do. You can do it on your smartphone. You can do it on your computer. You can even do it on Roku and Amazon Fire Stick and all those things. It's easy. Just sign up for it. And then it's free. The parish is providing it to you. So you don't even have to pay for it. Well, you're paying for it because you're putting money in the basket so we can pay that bill. But We'll argue that later. My dear brothers and sisters, claim your victory. Say those words, Lord, I surrender, and truly mean it. And then you can walk out of here with victory. Claim your victory. You're a child of God, and he has graced you tremendously and blessed you fully and said to you, my child, come to me, and I will put peace in your heart. Claim your victory. God bless you.